Good morning, everyone. My name is Gabriel Jimenez, and I'm a product marketing manager at Google, working across all of Southeast Asia. I want to start off by saying thank you to ASEC Jean Pacheco and the rest of the DTI team for hosting the MSME Caravan Monday session with Google. It's been a great couple of sessions, and we're excited to keep the energy going. Last week, you might remember that we discussed Google My Business, which is a free tool to help businesses all across the globe, and especially in the Philippines, get found online in, through Google Search and Google Maps for free. Today, we're going to shift topics a little bit and talk less about how your business gets found and how you can actually run your business online and collaborate with your employees and colleagues online. We're going to talk about Google Workspace, the home for all of Google's team collaboration and communication tools. Some of you might be aware that Google Workspace was formerly named G Suite. Similar types of products, just new name. We'll start off today's presentation with an actual, we'll start today's session with a presentation from my colleague, Aggie Flavier. She'll discuss why Google Workspace is so important given the impact of social distancing and remote working and learning because of COVID-19. Then she'll highlight a couple of Google Workspace examples of how it's being currently used by companies and governments in the Philippines to navigate COVID-19. And then, of course, she'll spend most of the time explaining a bunch of the features that Google and tools that Google Workspace has and deep dive into how MSMEs can take advantage of the tools. Most of the features we discussed today will be tools that you can access for free, but some will only be available for business accounts. But we still think it's a good idea to have an overview on everything for your benefit. After, the, after Aggie's presentation, We'll hop into a quick tutorial on how to use some of the main Google Workspace tools so you can see them in live demos. If you have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A portals in order to ask us questions. We'll try to give written feedback or answer some of them live at the very end. Thanks so much for joining us today, and I'll kick it over to Aggie to get started with the presentation. Hi, I'm Aggie Flavier. Before anything else, let me briefly share with you some tidbit about myself. I started my career in operations as a frontliner in the airline and banking industry and was also a pioneer and seasoned BPO leader. Then after several years, I shifted my career in information technology, helping enterprise and public sector customers with their digital transformation. In 2020, during the peak of the pandemic, I joined Google as the public sector lead and now helping with their efforts in the economic recovery. Our mission at Google Cloud has always been to accelerate every organization's ability to digitally transform their business and to reimagine their business through data-powered innovation. Google Workspace is a product that sits within the Google Cloud team. In 2020, we have seen the biggest change ever to the way we work and socialize. COVID-19 has challenged all businesses around the globe in an unprecedented way and business challenges have been amplified, and this will continue driving more opportunities and competition. MSMEs, in particular, are also in unprecedented experience where MSMEs need to manage their businesses more remotely, connect with customers more through digital, and try to use data to make smart business decisions. But that definitely is driving more potential opportunities to take advantage of online collaboration and productivity tools like Google Workspace. Every student is now an experienced distant learner. On this slide, it shows an eight-year-old child in front of a great video conference screen with a tablet on the side as additional screen to chat with their classmates, a microphone headset on their head, a couple of sketch notebooks still on their desk to show the best of past and present. During the peak of the pandemic, Google and Apple released contact tracing tools for mobile phones that everyone will use to go back to normal. For us in the Philippines, we use staysafe.ph. Nearly 40% of workers spend less than 15 minutes outside during work days. That's 1% of your day. And let's be honest, it's probably to get something done, like taking out the trash or walking your dog. This was true before the pandemic, and a recent study showed that the workday is only getting longer as we're shifting to a more distributed, remote work environment. So let me begin by saying that due to the pandemic, we have noticed work evolving in ways we have not seen before. 
with offices being closed and reopened with limited capacity, employees have been shifting to new ways of working, often remotely. With that, work can no longer be identified by a physical location. Time is also much more valuable today, as we have our personal commitments, such as taking care of our kids and elderly parents, all while we are juggling work at the same time. We also realize that the human connection we receive when working in the office has been somewhat lost in us. These are the current challenges that Google is trying to address with Google Workspace today. It is also true that the pandemic we are all facing today will one day pass. But I strongly believe the lessons we learn from it will last a long time into our future. The biggest change we have seen amongst MSMEs is the need to transform and digitalize how MSMEs are discovered by their customers and how they operate their business. What used to be in-person collaboration has now transformed into video meetings, digital messaging tools, and online stores. With the use of Google Workspace, we can see MSMEs continue to provide their services to existing and new customers. So imagine a world where technology puts people at the center so that even teams who have never met in person can feel like they're in the same room. Instead of distracting or adding steps to get something done, technology should anticipate our needs and unbet our work so that we can maximize our time. And instead of rigid tools that only work one way and best in a traditional office setting, we can work how we want, wherever we want, supported by flexible, easy-to-use tools. And all of this is in service of delivering the best possible outcomes to citizens and customers. That's where Google Workspace comes in. Google Workspace is designed to be and functions in a way that is truly helpful. Imagine technology that is so seamless and intuitive that it feels invisible, but anticipates our needs and augments our work so that we can maximize our time. Google Workspace includes all of the productivity apps we all know and love. Gmail, Calendar, Drive, Docs, Sheets, Slides, Meet, and many more, all together in a single place. Whether you're at home, at work, or in the classroom, it's the best way to create, communicate, and collaborate. Google Workspace intelligently brings together the people, content, and projects you need to make the most of your time. It seamlessly integrates core elements of work like chat, email, voice plus video calling, along with document collaboration and task management. It's why over 2.6 billion users choose to use our apps every month. Even if you haven't used our apps before, you'll find that they're incredibly intuitive to use and helpful in a way that endures, scales, and flexes as your business evolves. And we don't want you to think Google Workspace is some random new technology for the Philippines. It's actually quickly becoming a tool that empowers the future workforce of the nation. In the Philippines, we have the largest deployment of Google Workspace for Education across Japan and Asia Pacific as well. Partnering with DepEd, we are carrying out a nationwide rollout of Google Workspace for Education, enabling 22 million students and teachers to collaborate with the use of Google Workspace. This is important to the government of the Philippines as it shows that the next generation of employees entering the workforce will be familiar with Google Workspace. This can help attract talent, reduce onboarding time, and save costs in the future. Since the start of the pandemic, Google has been working closely with key government stakeholders to provide their assistance in their pandemic response. In particular, we have been working with DTI and DOT to help boost their economic recovery efforts through digital workshops, product enhancement, and advertising grants. We train micro, small, and medium enterprises, MSMEs, how to grow their business efficiently through digital tools such as Google My Business. 
Here are two real-life use cases that were done in the Philippines. On the left, you have the Department of Transportation using Google Workspace to record an announcement on the updates of extended lockdown, then publishing it on YouTube Live for the citizens to watch and interact. On the right, we have our Department of Health along with our partner Senti AI develop a knowledge-based chatbot on top of Google Cloud. In line with our commitment in creating a positive impact on education, Google is supporting inclusive distance learning in the country. We are delivering on this goal through our technology and support of nonprofits through the Google.org grant, which aims to build the capacity of educators to provide remote learning online and for students who don't have access to the internet and modern devices. In collaboration with the DICT GovMail, which is built on Google Workspace, has enabled many government employees to stay connected while working remotely. With the migration of GovMail to Workspace, coordination between government agencies are now more organized, which results in better response time that benefits their constituents. An LGU in the Philippines, the city government of Zamboanga, has leveraged Google Sites and Google Workspace for their COVID response operations to ensure safe, reliable, and up-to-date information that is shared with their citizens. This has helped them curb the spread of misinformation and also kept the citizens well informed. What's so special about Google Workspace? Artificial intelligence and machine learning technology of Google is embedded in Google Workspace. For example, an internal cloud search to find the most relevant information and suggestion for the sentence you want to compose in Gmail. It is powered by the same engine that transformed Google Search, YouTube videos, Google Photos, and Translation. Google has nine products with over one billion daily users, including Google Search, YouTube, and Android, which means its intelligence engine has the massive underlying training data to be processed, build and develop the powerful and sophisticated algorithm. For instance, Google's natural language processing has been trained over many years based on data from billions of Google search users. Google Workspace leverages this powerful technology to help people work faster and smarter. Businesses that need to power their teams to work effectively from anywhere now that we're all distributed, and this is our new reality. Those that have large frontline for workforces, where teams in the field rely on mobile and already are using our tools. And customers that are needing to completely redesign their own customer experiences. Before we get into the details of how our product works and how we're different, I want to lead with what we can do for your business which is why we're having this conversation today. Studies have shown that people who use Google Workspace are happier at work and more innovative. So future generations expect to use it when they enter the workforce. Among Google Workspace users we surveyed, 68% enjoyed work more after adopting Google Workspace versus 30% of other productivity tools. We know that happier and more engaged employees deliver a better experience to your customers, which supports top-line revenue growth. And because our open platform is built with collaboration at the core, people have an ambient awareness of what others are working on and a broader access to people and ideas across an organization. Because of these, we've seen that 75% Google Workspace users say that their teams are more innovative. And going with Google Workspace is quite literally a bet on your future workforce. According to Forrester's total economic impact analysis, Google Workspace saves companies 171 hours per users per year. That adds up to around 21 days, which is basically a whole extra month of productivity in your working year. It reduces on-demand tech support cost by 20% and delivers an ROI of 331%. So how does Google Workspace work? What are the apps in Google Workspace? 
Let's explore it. Gmail. Gmail is a web-based email service that allows an organization to run its email system using Google's systems. It provides the capability to access an end user's inbox from a supported web browser. Read email, compose, reply to, forward mail, search mail, and manage mail through labels. Gmail pioneered a new approach to email over 15 years ago with lightning fast search, effective spam filtering, and cutting edge security that only the cloud could enable. And we haven't stopped innovating. And now, you can do so much more than email in Gmail. You can reach all the people you need to work with via whichever channel makes sense. Chat, meet, voice, and more. See your upcoming schedule and jump right into meetings. You can build customer trust by providing everyone in your company a professional email address using your domain, like greens at plantita.com and joe at stake.com. And you can create group mailing lists like sales at stakes.com. Gmail has robust integrations. Gmail works great with desktop clients like Microsoft Outlook, Apple Mail, and Mozilla Thunderbird. Outlook users can sync emails, events, and contacts to and from Google Workspace. What is Smart Compose in Gmail? It constantly suggests completions of the whole sentence as you type. You can press tab anytime to accept. The completions do not follow simply pre-programmed patterns, but are constructed on the fly depending on the contents. While Smart Reply in Gmail and in Hangouts chat, it anticipates possible answers to a message and offers them in the form of a button, so no answer must be typed. One click is enough. This feature is extremely popular for fast answers and already delivers more than 10% of email replies on mail. Gmail machine learning not only to display messages by category, but also to detect and automatically filter out malware, phishing, and spam emails. You don't need third-party solutions anymore. With the introduction of machine learning add-on filters, Gmail was able to eliminate 100 million more spam every day than before. Google Calendar Google Calendar is a web-based service for managing personal, corporate, or organizational, and team calendars. Google Calendar is an intelligent scheduling that provides an interface for end users to view their calendars, schedule meetings with other end users, see availability information for other end users, and schedule rooms and resources. Google Calendar does smart scheduling for meetings. It schedules events quickly by checking coworkers' availability or showing their calendars in a single view. You can share calendars so people see full event details or if you are free. You can also browse and reserve conference rooms with detailed information on capacity and equipment visible when reserving a room. It's easy to set up shared rooms or resources and add them to events. You can join meetings from any device, whether it is a laptop, mobile device, or even dial in with a phone number. Google Calendar displays a pop-up reminder like 10 minutes before an event. You can also change reminder times within Calendar's settings. Google Meet and Google Chat. Google Meet makes connecting with coworkers or with your customers really easy. Our engineers at Google have thoughtfully designed the product to be inclusive and simple for everyone to use. Google Meet provides the ability for real-time communication between end users, including one-on-one -on -one and group conversations via messaging, voice, and video. Google Meet is secure. Google started in the cloud and runs on the cloud. So we fully understand the security implications of powering your business in the cloud. 
Because Google and our enterprise services run on the same infrastructure, your organization will benefit from the protections we built and use every day. Our robust global infrastructure, along with dedicated security professionals and our drive to innovate, enables Google to stay ahead of the curve and offer a highly secure, reliable, and compliant environment that's easy to manage. With Google Meet, you do not have to download anything at all. Just tap the meeting link containing your email or calendar invite, and you are in. Before you join the meeting, you can see a live video preview so you can choose to mute yourself or switch off your video prior to joining a meeting. With Google Meet, being tech savvy is no longer a requirement to leverage the best technology. One feature that is particularly useful is the live closed caption feature, particularly with the diverse and distributed teams. The little things you do to ensure everyone is included can make the difference between a high-performing team and a divided one. Live closed captions is one important component of our commitment to inclusivity and accessibility. Live captions use Google's AI technology to do speech-to-text and show real-time captions of your meeting. For people who are deaf or hard of hearing, live captions make it easier to follow along with the meeting. It can also help you if you're working in a place with a noisy background, such as when the kids are running around in your home office. You can access Google Meet from your laptop, tablet, or phone. You can also view and edit your schedule from your phone or tablet. You can optimize mobile apps or sync with your phone's built-in calendar. Why does simplicity matter? People are overburdened with the number of work apps they use and notifications they receive. Because our products are closely integrated and easy to learn and use, people can work in parallel to move faster and stay aligned. This is incredibly important in the shift to remote-based work. There's no version control, wasted time waiting for someone to unlock a document, or confusion about which app to use. For users on Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Edge, we don't require or ask for any plugins or software to be installed. Meet works entirely in the browser. Google Meet integrates with other meeting solutions seamlessly, like Microsoft Teams. Google Chat. Google Chat provides direct messages and team chat rooms, along with a group messaging function that allows Google Drive content sharing. Google Chat is great for easy collaboration. Chat makes it easy for teams to be able to get their work done in one place. From direct messages to group conversations, chat helps teams collaborate easily and efficiently. You can use Google Chat as a standalone chat similar to WhatsApp, Viber, etc. or write in your Gmail. Whether in a one-on-one -on -one chat or a dedicated group workspace, Google Chat makes it easy to collaborate with your team in an organized way. You can share and discuss files in Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides all in one place. And add chat to your Gmail inbox and get all the features of chat directly in Gmail. Google's history and growth has been based on its ability to deal with vast amounts of data quickly and effectively. All documents and content available in the company can be searched quickly and easily with Google Workspace Cloud Search, which leverages the power of Google Search to reduce time to find content and also connect to third-party or on-premise systems. With dedicated virtual rooms to house projects over time, plus threaded conversations, chat makes it simple to track progress and follow-up tasks. Chat currently supports 28 languages, and each room can support up to 8,000 members. Google Drive Google Drive provides web-based tools enabling end users to store, transfer, and share files, and view videos. Drive is a single space for all the stuff your team creates. It is one source of truth that is always up to date for everyone. And since we're Google, of course, it's easy to search to find the information or expertise you need. 
you can work seamlessly with Drive on the tools you're used to. Plugins for Microsoft Office and Outlook make fitting Drive into your workflow as simple as possible. You can also open more than four plus different file types with Drive, including PDFs and MPEG4, and work on Microsoft Word files straight from Drive. The business version of Drive gives you more storage, stronger support, and shared drives for your team. You can use our migration tools and services to move your organization's important data to Google Workspace from your current storage solutions. You can use hundreds of integrated apps, including DocuSign for e-signatures, CloudLock for additional security layers, and LucidCharts for mockups to get things done directly from Drive. Drive uses Google AI to predict and surface what's important for you in real time. Drive recognizes important content, collaborators, and events using features like quick access. You can sync files with your computer automatically. You can sync all or some of your files to a designated folder on your computer. Any changes you make locally are automatically mirrored in Drive and vice versa. You can control how your files are shared. You can keep files private until you decide to share them. You can avoid multiple versions and file merging by granting others permission to download, edit, comment, or view. You can also give shared files an expiration date. Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Forms are all web-based services that enable end users to create, edit, share, collaborate, draw, export and embed content on documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and forms. Google Docs. Commenting, chat, and real-time editing can be done in Google Docs. You can work in a single document with teammates or people outside your company. You can see edits as others type, communicate through built-in chat, and ask questions through including comments. It has unlimited revision history. It tracks the changes made to your documents and undo anything you choose. Previous versions are kept indefinitely and they don't count toward your storage. Google Sheets. Crunching data made simple with Google Sheets. It can perform calculations with powerful functions and formulas in spreadsheets. You can also add sophisticated charts, generate pivot table reports, add filters, and more. Google Sheets work with all popular file types. You can import and convert existing spreadsheets to make them instantly editable, including Microsoft Excel files. You can keep working from any device. You can create, edit, and share spreadsheets from your phone or tablet, no matter where you happen to be. You can work in Sheets even when you're offline. Google Slides. Google Slides are easy to design slides. You can start from scratch or expedite the process by choosing a template. You can enhance your presentations with videos, images, drawings, and smooth transitions. Google Forms. Google Forms are easy to share forms to specific people or to a broad audience by embedding forms on your website or sharing via social media. Google makes smarter forms. Data validation rules can make sure email addresses are properly formatted, dates are correct, and that people get the right questions based on their previous answers. You can create a Google form as easily as creating a document. You can select from multiple question types, drag and drop to reorder questions, and customize values as easily as pasting a list. You can create and send professional-looking surveys to customers. Great-looking surveys help you connect with customers to gain valuable insights. 
Add images, videos, and custom logic to give people who respond a great survey experience. Google Forms can analyze responses with automatic summaries. You can watch responses appear in real time. You can also access the raw data and analyze it with Google Sheets or other software. Real-time collaboration helps you create your form faster and lets you analyze results together without having to send around multiple versions of the file. Google Forms can handle as much data as Google Sheets, and Google Sheets can currently handle 2 million cells of data. That's a lot of data. All right. Thanks so much, Aggie, for that great presentation, deep diving all the great features within Google Workspaces and some of the use cases for all of you to use. Now, I know that was a lot of information to take in, understanding how Google Workspace works and all the different features that we have. So what I wanted to do was actually just take a few minutes to just do a tutorial of some of the free tools within Google Workspace that you can all use right away as a small to medium business. Um, for example's sake, I'm going to pretend that I am a uh, barbershop owner. My sister and brother-in-law own a barbershop, so it's a little close to my heart, and I know that they actually use Google Workspace tools in order to help manage their business online and collaborate with their other employees. Um, so let's actually start off with just, we're going to do a few examples today. We're going to look at how to use Google Calendar with Google Meet to do video calling and scheduling, and we're also going to look at how you can use tools like Docs or, or Sheets in order to create um, um, some collaboration tools with other, other teammates. And then we'll also take a look at maybe how to create a Google form to create maybe like a survey for customers. Just a few examples for you to kind of see live, really good examples of how MSME could potentially use this. All right, so on my screen, you can see that it's opened up to my, uh, my Google Calendar. On the left-hand side, you'll see um, all the days in the week. Um, you'll see that I have it set up to show me one week at a time. You can change it. You can show uh, five days at a time. You can show the entire month on your main screen. I like to have seven days so I can see a full week schedule. You can see where you can adjust that here at the top right where you can adjust what you want to see at one time. Um, you can see on the left hand side that there's different calendars that are listed. So I have my own personal calendar here, but I also have a calendar I share with my family. So that way whenever we have like family events, so maybe we have like a Zoom call that we do once every couple of weeks, that will actually show up on, on, my, on my schedule here. But if you are a business trying to run something, a, a really good example of trying where you would need to use Google Calendar is maybe for booking appointments. So imagine that I am a barbershop, we're gonna say Gabe's Barbershop, and I need to book an appointment um, uh, for someone. Um, we're going to pretend that I'm booking an appointment for um, another Gabe, another, another Gabriel. We'll pretend there's two Gabriels out there. And let's pretend like uh, Gabriel called me already and said for this week, uh, he wants an appointment um, in, in, the, or in the morning around Wednesday. And I was like, okay, we can squeeze you in at 10 a.m. on Wednesday the 24th. Now we want to send a Google Calendar invite to him so that he knows that it's on the list and knows that he could um, uh, knows that um, he could um, see it uh, pop up and put it on his Google Calendar so he remembers what it's at. So all you have to do to set that up is you actually find uh, the date, the 24th of the 24th, and it's a Wednesday, and we find the time where it says 10 a.m. here, and we just click here. And by clicking here, you automatically see an option show up where you can have um, you can fill out a calendar. So we're going to write in Gabe's um, um, haircut appointment. Right there, we're gonna say it lasts one hour because that's the average time it usually lasts. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add him so we can invite him. So I'm gonna add another email of myself pretending that it's a pretending that it's a, a different customer. Um, and so that's gonna be added there. So when we set the when we send the invitation, he'll get it actually as an email. Now the other thing that automatically happens is when you add someone else it automatically will link in a Google Meet uh, video link. So this again is the video uh, conferencing tool that we have in Google Workspaces. And so if you wanted to meet with someone, what would actually automatically happen is Google Meet would automatically integrate with it. So what we could do is we could add the location. Um, if there was a specific location that we had, then we could add it. But um, uh, since I don't have the actual physical business, I, 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 I won't use this tool, but normally you could actually add the address to your business. And when someone clicks on this part right here, your actual uh, listing or your, the address in Google Maps will show up. And then you can even add a little description or attachments. So in the description, I can write um, confirmed appointment time uh, to 
get um, haircut and beard trip. Maybe maybe it was both both services are going to be offered for that session. So with all this, we can even actually go into more options and see that there's even more stuff that we can add. Um, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and click save. And what that does is it gives us an option to send this invite to the to the person that we added, and we click send. And now that calendar invite is listed there for us on our schedule, but also it's sent to our customer so that way they have it there in their, their calendar. And again, if we ever actually wanted to take advantage of that Google Meet video link that's automatically added, because pretend, let's pretend, oh, you'll notice that like Google will automatically add a little image if it notices a relevant category. Uh, what all you have to do is actually click on this blue link that says join with Google Meet, and it'll automatically take you to the video call. Right now, there's no one else in there, so we won't go ahead and click on it, uh, but we know that it's an option, all right? So we're going to close out of this. All right, so that is Google Calendar example right there. Now let's hop over to Google Drive. So in Google Drive right now, I'm in um, my starred folder, which you can see. Starred folder is just some key folder that I've added stars to. Um, I have, these are some old ones that I have from previous, like a, a class reunion, uh, a, thing that I was trying to put together and then a trip I took before COVID uh, for uh, Sri Lanka and some planning that we did for that. But on Google Drive, you'll see there's a bunch of options. It tells you how much storage you have left. I personally paid for it, did a little extra storage so that way I have that space and it tells me how much I have here. You can see things that you put in trash. You can see things that you've seen recently and then you can see everything that you have fully categorized. Um, and then um, the important button to see is this new button here. Clicking on this new button allows you to see all the different Google Workspace tools that you can create um, um, uh, something for. So let's take a practice with Google Sheets. Because Google Sheets is often a tool that small businesses can use for a lot of like planning uh, reasons. So for example, as a barbershop, I might use Google Sheets to plan weekly schedules. So maybe I will do um, Gabe's, bar we're gonna call it Gabe's Barbershop um, um, shift, uh, Shifts for 22nd, for the week of 22nd March. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this uh, spreadsheet so that way we can actually list out who has shifts at what time, and then we can share this with the rest of the people on the team, uh, the rest of the people in, in uh, the, the employees. So let's say we have the 22nd, 22nd Monday, 22nd March, and let's pretend that we have an early shift that runs from like 10 to 3 p.m. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then um, we'll say, we'll call this a late shift. And we'll pretend that this runs from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. All right, this is just made up times, right? And so what I can do here is I can actually extend, ooh, I forgot to make this the actual 22nd. What you'll notice here, um, and we'll just jump to this feature, is that um, when Google Sheets notices that it's an actual date, it will automatically pull up a calendar to make it easier for you to choose. So when I click on the 22nd there, it automatically fills it in with the correct date because I had a little typo earlier. The nice part is that you can also do is automatically pull down that cell and that spreadsheet, and it will actually just automatically import all the remaining dates that you need. So we're just going to do for the five day work week for now. And what we're going to do is start filling this in. So let's pretend like I, as the owner of the barbershop, I have signed up to, I'm going to do all the shifts in the, the morning shifts, because um, that's what allows me to do administration work in the afternoon. So what I do here is I insert my name. And then just like I did earlier, actually, I can drag this down and I can fill in my name automatically here. And then what I can do is then I can start assigning shifts to the other people who are, are working at those certain times. So for example, um, Aggie, maybe we'll ask her to work. She runs a business with me, we'll pretend. We'll ask her to work Monday, Wednesday, and Friday late shift. And then Eves, who is another colleague of mine that you might have seen in other presentations, uh, we'll ask him to work Tuesday and, and Thursday shifts. And now we have the shifts listed out here in the spreadsheet, which is really easy for people to, to use. The great part about this, though, is you can, also, you can share this document with these employees, so that way they have access to it. Um, uh, they, they have access to the um, uh, to, to the, um, the the schedule. So all you have to do is you come here and you can automatically see that um, right now it's restricted to only people that I 
that I add, that I add. So I'm going to share this with Eve. Let's pretend his, his address is Eve's at uh, GabeBarbershop.com. And I enter that. And basically, I'll be able to give him either edit access, comment access, where he can just comment, but he can't edit anything, or view access. And I can even add a little note being like, um, schedule for this week is available. And I'll give him edit access in case he wants to change any of the shifts that he's in. Maybe he swaps with Aggie or something like that. And then I just click send. I won't click send for now because this isn't a real email address, but you get the idea, right? And what's really cool is that beyond that, if I just wanted to let Eve know about a very specific time or Aggie know about a very specific time, what I could actually do is just leave a comment where I go ahead and I let Gab, I let Aggie know, Gabe, I think I said Gabe Barbershop, right? By doing this, I can assign this uh, comment to Aggie and then, um, and then I make sure that she has access to it. And what will happen is she'll get an email that says that she has been, a sheet has been shared with her and that she can access it. So it's a pretty cool tool that you can, uh, a way that you can just add people on and assign them different cells. And again, you can do this completely for free. I'm going to click cancel because this isn't a real email for now, but it's just for example. Let's do one more quick example here of a Google form. So like I mentioned before, um, you can ignore that I just showed as a, a test example so I could make sure that we were doing it right. But what we go, what we do is we hit the new button here and then we click on Google Forms. And then Google Forms will open up a new Google form. And let's pretend that we're going to make this a customer feedback form because that's often a way that uh, small businesses will use uh, uh, Google Forms. So let's say customer feedback form, and then we'll write as the, this will be the title of the form that people get. Then we'll write the description that we want people just so that they have an understanding of what the form is. Please leave um, feedback on your recent haircut experience at Gabe's Barber Shop. All right, so we've given the description, now we gotta create the question. So you'll see that Google Forms automatically prompts you to list one specific question first. The best way to always start off is just to start listing your question. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ask, who was their barber? Who was your barber today? And then we'll say, it could either have been me, it could either have been Eve, or it could have either have been Aggie. What's nice is that Google Forms has an other option. So maybe we can add other in that way in the, the feedback recipient um, or the feedback giver has an option in case maybe we brought in like a fourth extra person that day because we were busy. Now we will leave this as a multiple choice because we want to give the, the customer options to choose between who, who which barber they saw. Now this is a very important question. So what we're actually gonna do is list requ required. So that way we know that they definitely are going to answer the question for us. Um, that they have to respond in order to submit the form. Now we're going to add a second question. A second question that we want to really ask is um, uh, like maybe like a scale on like one to ten, how much did you like your haircut? So on a scale of uh, one to ten, how great was your haircut experience? And when we ask that, what we need to do is change to linear scale. What you're going to notice right now, which you might have noticed, is that the Google form system is so smart that it automatically picked up on the type of question I was asking. So it knows that we need to ask them a scale type of question. Now look at what happens here. So it gives you a threshold between one to 10. And what I'm gonna do is gonna write um, worst experience. And you'll see what this looks like uh, in a bit, why, why it's set up this way. And then best experience. And why we do that is because when we actually go ahead and see what this form looks like, which I'm going to do in the top right hand corner, clicking on this eye icon, it'll let us to preview it. We're going to see that now users can rank their experience from one to 10 with 10 being the best experience and one being the worst experience. So that way they can kind of give us our ass feeling like it was like a seven, you know? Um, and then you can see that this, how this looks overall. Let's go back to just do a one other quick edit here. Let's add one more area which is just what, do you have any like general feedback for us? Please provide any general suggestions on, on how to improve our business. Maybe we just wanna know like, what ideas do you have? And what we would wanna do there 
is we would want to change it to paragraph or short answer. So the system you can see already picked up that we were asking for um, any, this, sorry, that we were asking for written feedback. So it automatically change the type of uh, uh, answer that we are going to get. So this one we maybe don't need a list required because maybe everyone doesn't actually have a specific you know written feedback that they want to give. They had a great experience. They don't have anything. But this one we're probably going to want to leave as required. And we just go check preview one more time. And we see that we have all the questions here as an example of what it would look like. One last thing to show you is that with this tool, you can actually even adjust some of the style. So maybe like I can, you can go in here and actually choose, you hit the customized theme icon, which is like a, a paint palette. And you can actually change the color of the form to make it more match your brand colors. You can upload an image from your, of your logo of your brand from your, from your laptop. Or you can just find an example here. So maybe for like, I'll jump into illustrations and just choose like an, an illustration here that might look good. So maybe, uh, uh, I kind of like this one. It looks kind of cool. It doesn't have anything to do with a, with a barbershop, but I, I like the cool, I like it. Oh, it's an Easter theme one. So we'll just go with it just because we have it here. But you can see that you can actually adjust the type of font that you have to make it maybe more formal if you want. Um, or you can adjust the, the background color to make it a little like darker or lighter. But all of this will show up when you do the preview example, and you can see what the final form will look like. Now to send this out to users, all you have to do is actually, or to customers, is just click on the purple send button on the top right -hand corner, and then you can either send it to specific email addresses, or you can actually just copy the link here and add it to maybe another email that you were gonna send out, or maybe you, um, uh, you add it to your company's uh, website or something like that. Or what you can also do is you can click and share it on Facebook or Twitter. You can share it directly to your Facebook page or your, your Twitter page if that works for you. So all in all, these are just three quick examples of how you as an MSME might be able to use the Google Workspace tools, the free ones especially, in order to help ma uh, manage your business and collaborate with teammates. But now we'll switch over to question and answer. Uh, feel free to uh, to ask us how we can, uh, things that we can clarify and how we can better help. Have a good one.